All right, this is the last video in our series and we just want to see how we can protect certain routes using a middleware in Next.js app. So far, we've learned that Next.js uses file and folder names to achieve the results we want. And we learned that the folder names are route names or layout becomes our shared layout or a file named loading becomes our loading state and page becomes our actual component. But that same rule applies to the middleware. In order to have a middleware in our Next.js application, we can create a new document in the root directory of our application. So not in the app folder, but in our source folder, because we do have a source folder. If you didn't have this source folder, you would create your middleware right here in the root directory. The name of this document must be middleware.js or ts for TypeScript. And in this document, we should have one function that is being exported and it is called middleware. So let's say export default function middleware. And as the argument, this will take the request, which is a next request. So this is from next forward slash server. And we don't actually have to import this since we are using JS. But if you were using TypeScript, you would say, for example, next request like this. So that would set the type. But again, we are not using TypeScript, so we don't need this. I just wanted to show you what sort of request is this. Now, in this function, let's simply log something into the console. So we would say middleware called. And that's it. So we created a document named middleware and we placed it in the root directory of our app. And from that document, we exported one function. So if we go back to our website and just reload a few times and go back to the terminal, you notice that the middleware was called. Now there are multiple ways to apply this, but I will try to keep it as simple as possible. So first I'm going to create two arrays, one for our protected routes and one for our public routes. So I will just duplicate this. I will change the name to public and let me close the sidebar. And in these two arrays, we just want to define the routes. For example, dashboard, should be protected and our posts forward slash create also should be protected. And for now, let's leave it as these two. For the public routes, we just have login and register. So let's add them in here as well. And in our middleware function, we just want to see if the route that the user is trying to visit is one of the protected routes or one of the public routes and see if they are logged in so they can visit these if they are not logged in, they will be redirected to the login page. So let's take this step by step. First, we need to figure out where the user is trying to go. Let's create a path variable here, and I will set this to request, next URL, and then path name. Then let's log that into the console. So this is again coming from the request, which is a next request. Back to the website again, I'm gonna press reload a few times. And back in the terminal, you can see we get a bunch of path names here. That is because Next.js is including all the path at the moment. And we will talk about how to exclude or include certain path. So for example, if I go back to the website and go to the register and then go back to the terminal, you can see we have forward slash register right here. That means we are able to grab the path name from the request. Then the next step is to see if that path is protected or public. So let's create another variable here and I will call this is protected. Then we will set this to protected routes dot include. So we want to see if the path that the user is trying to reach is included in this protected route. If that's true, then this variable would be true. And we want to do the same thing for is public. So we want to check if the route or the path that they are trying to reach is a public route or a protected one. Now the next step is to see if the user is logged in or not. And based on the information we get, we can make a decision. So we can grab our user from the cookies and we already have a function called get auth user. So let's import that from our lib folder. And this is returning a promise. So let's make our function async. Now from the user, let's grab the user ID or extract the user ID and say, if the user was not null, then give us the user ID. This is just to be sure that we actually have a proper object and within that object, we have a user ID. Now that we have enough information, we want to check if the route that the user is trying to visit is protected and the user ID is false. That means they are not logged in and they are trying to visit 
a protected route. So we want to return a next response, which needs to be imported from next forward slash server. And on that next response class, we have a redirect function. In this function, we can pass the URL that we want to redirect the user, but we cannot just say login like this because this will throw an error. We cannot use a relative path in this function, but what we can do is to use the URL interface, then pass login as the first argument, and then use the request next URL as the base. So this will resolve to whatever our domain is and then forward slash login. All right, so this is the first part. And now let's do the same thing for the public routes. We just want to say if is public and the user is logged in, then they don't need to go to those pages so they can go to their dashboard. Because if a user is logged in, they don't need to visit login or register. So we will redirect them to their dashboard. Now, if none of this is the case, then we would simply return a next response. And on that, we use the next function. This will carry on with the next request. All right, so this is a very simple example of a middleware. We just define our protected and public routes, and then we check if the path that the user is trying to visit is protected or public. If they are authenticated, and the route is protected, then it's fine, they can visit. But if they are not authenticated, they will be redirected to the login page. On the other hand, if they are authenticated and they try to visit login or register, then we will redirect them to their dashboard because there is no need for them to visit those pages. So this is not complete, of course, but we will come back to it in a moment. Let's just test out the few routes we have in place. So on the home page, we don't have any problem and I am not logged in. I can go and visit this detailed page of each post. If I try to go to login and register, that's also fine. But if I try to go to dashboard, then I am redirected to the login page. If I try to go to the create page, again to the login page. However, if I try to go to the update page by editing the URL, I will get an error and we will get to this error. Even though this error is coming from the edit component complaining about the user ID, but we don't even want to get there. We want to use the middleware to intercept this request and not read anything from the component if the user is not logged in. So we will fix that in a moment, but let's log in. And of course we can go to our dashboard. We can go to the edit page, no problem. But if I try to go to login, then we are back to the dashboard. And of course, same thing works for the register. And we are back to the dashboard. So this simple middleware is working properly, except that update page, which we will fix just now. So let's log out again, visit the update page. So we get an error. That is because we are not including that in our protected routes. And we cannot come up here and say, for example, posts forward slash edit, because that route is dynamic. But what we can do, we add another condition to this is protected property. Right now we are just saying if it is included in this array, but we want to say or using two pipes and say if our path starts with our edit page URL. So we can pass a string and say if it starts with posts forward slash edit and then another forward slash. So this variable here is going to be true if the path is one of these or it starts with posts forward slash edit. So back to our website, if I reload this one, we are redirected to the login page. So we don't even get to the component to read anything from it. So we don't get any errors. And with that, we fixed the problem we had and the middleware is working. But I just want to mention a few more things. So let's log that path once again into the console. Somewhere in this function, I'm just going to log that path and go to the website, give it a reload, and then go back to the terminal. So you notice we are getting all these routes, which are all coming from our application, and Next.js is handling that behind the scene. But we don't really need to run the middleware on certain routes. If we go to Next Documentation, we have a section here that is called the matcher, and that is basically using an object in the middleware document to say which routes to include or which routes to exclude. So for example, let's copy this piece of code from the documentation. We're not going to use it. I just want to show you how it works and paste it down here. So after our function, we have another export that is called config and we are setting that to an object. 
one of the properties we can use in this object is called the matcher. And this shows which routes or path should use this middleware. For example, if we change this to dashboard and then go back to our website, give it a reload, and then try to go to the dashboard, of course, we go to the login. However, let's go to posts create. You can see we can access the page and we are not logged in because using this object, we said we only want to apply the middleware to the dashboard page. So that's what this matcher does. It, it is used to exclude or include certain path from our middleware. Let's say you want to have multiple path here. You can turn this into an array and say, for example, dashboard and posts forward slash create. So this will now redirect us to the login page. But this will again create a problem if we try to access the edit page because the middleware is not working. So sometimes you want to say that include all the routes that starts with post and whatever comes after it. So instead of hard coding this create, I can say colon path star. So whatever comes after this post, and now back to our website, you can see we are redirected to the login page. So we cannot go to the create page. We can see we are back to the login or the edit page. We can also have a reverse lookup or matcher. And in the documentation, we have an example here and I'm going to copy it, paste it here so we can see better. And you can see we still have that matcher array. And this one is a bit more complex, but we can see what it does using this comment. It will match all the requests except for the ones starting with API underscore next or the icon sitemap and robots. So remember before we would get all these path in our terminal. If we go back to the home page of our application and reload it a few times, you notice we are not getting all of that extra path anymore. We are just getting forward slash, which is the path name. So I will keep this here and I will remove these comments. And this is our middleware. It works the way we want. And if you have more path or more directories, you can just add it here. Just remember that if you have dynamic routes, you need to use functions like starts with, or in some cases you can use rejects. Let's delete this console.log. And let's go back to our website and have a complete test one last time. I'm going to start by registering a new user. For example, Jack, I'm going to add a password. If it doesn't match, then we will, of course, see an error. Let's register. We wait a while. We go back to the dashboard. We don't have any posts. Let's create one. So I would say Jack's post and some text for the content. I'm just going to copy paste this. Press submit. We have our post here back in the dashboard. We can go to the view page or we can go and edit that. Let's say update. It works. If we delete it, it also works. We go back to the home page and let's go to John's post. We can see it. No problem. If we try to edit this one, then we are back to the home page because we do not own the post. If we try to go to the login page while we are logged in, we are back to our dashboard. And if we log out, and try to visit dashboard, we are redirected to the login, and it seems that everything is properly working. So we are done with our Next.js crash course, and we covered a lot of topics. In the future, I will have more Next.js videos and playlists, but this is the end of this series. And I wanna thank you all for your support, and see you in the future videos.